This is Tom Renecki, and today I'm going to show you my favorite nine things for people to do at home to take care of their toenail fungus. But stick around to the end because I'm going to tie it all together with my big tip that makes it all work. And we're starting now. So toenail fungus is not what a lot of people think. And there's a lot of crazy stuff in the pharmaceutical industry. There's some drug manufacturers that got in a lot of trouble for jacking up prices. Uh, to extreme amounts for some of these toenail fungus medications. So there are a lot of studies on these home remedies and I love to combine them for my patients because a lot of them can be very, very effective. But that's always the disclaimer, go see your podiatrist, you know, if you have diabetes, if you have blood flow issues, be careful cutting your own skin, your own nails, you could really hurt yourself. You know, unfortunately I have to do a lot of toe amputations and uh, you know, admit a lot of people into the hospital with infections for these reasons, so be safe. Let's talk a little bit about what toenail fungus is. So what's important here is let's learn a little bit about nail anatomy. So on the fingers right here, if we look at the side view, you have something called your nail matrix. This isn't like the Keanu Reeves movie. This is stem cells that continuously grow your nail. So like a train on train tracks, the nail grows out. How fast does it grow? It grows about one and a half times faster on the fingernails and uh, you know about 50% slower on the toenails. But on average, it's a grain of rice on the toenails in length in about three or four months is what I usually tell people. On average, that's 1.2 millimeters per month is the official scientific fact that I've seen. So toenail fungus is something called onychomycosis. So fungus is not actually all that dangerous unless it gets into the wrong spots and your body can't fight it off. So this is usually either really sick people or people with toenails and fingernails and thick dry skin. So athlete's foot is a common cause of toenail fungus and it can crawl under your toenails. And that's kind of the important thing is you gotta take care of this, otherwise it's gonna destroy your skin, get it thick, flaky, it can smell, it can lead to health issues. But toenail fungus is called onychomycosis and it can burrow underneath the nail and it can get on top of the nail. It can be white, it can be brown, it can be yellow, it can turn your nail loose and black, it can make your toenails smell. It could make, you know, it can hurt people's self-esteem having these ugly toenails. A lot of patients come to me and they're afraid to show their toenails, but you can really get these things better. These things do work and it's not something you have to live with your whole life. Podiatrists and treatments can help. So the medications are terbenafine or Lamisil or itraconazole. These ones, they do have a lot of side effects. And the side effects of these medications are the biggest thing is we always have to run blood tests to make sure you're not getting liver damage. You can get upset stomach. You can get dizziness, get used a lot. They don't always cause complete cure. You know, in fact, the majority of the time they don't. So that's why some supplemental topical treatments that are easy and relatively safe to do are available. Take a look at this thick skin on the bottom of the foot. The blood flow does not penetrate that type of thick skin. Same thing with this thick toenail. Blood flow does not reach the top of that nail. How can a pill through your bloodstream reach the top of the nail? It can't. That's why topical lotions and some of these remedies can be even more effective than some of these more dangerous pills. So number one, here's my favorite one that I tell people to do, Vicks Vapor Rub. So Vicks Vapor Rub, Actually, a lot of studies, it has camphor, eucalyptus, menthol, all these things are toxic and antifungal, antibacterial. You just take a little bit, swab it, put it on your toenails at night or at the morning, you know, douse it in there. It can kill that fungus extremely well. So Vicks Vapor Rub, great treatment. Number two is tea tree oil. I love tea tree oil. This one can be a little bit more expensive than Vicks Vapor Rub, so it's not necessarily my go-to, but tea tree oil does have antifungal, antibacterial qualities. People have great results with this. Just apply it with like a little cotton swab in the morning, you know, on your toenails, on your fingernails. Make sure you get it in there. These things can work really well too, great studies. Apple cider vinegar, so I do like this. So you can take a little bit of apple cider vinegar, um, pour it into a bowl with some warm water, you know, like one third or a half of apple cider vinegar, soak for like 15, 20 minutes. 
there's a lot of good stuff in apple cider vinegar, and the vinegar has been shown to kill fungus, has been shown to kill bacteria, so you can get some great results with these things. In terms of risk, you know, there's very little risk in general. Listerine, so the mouthwash Listerine, you know, you're not drinking it, what you're doing is you're putting it in a tub and of you know a water tub and soaking your toes in there so we're talking 15 20 minutes watching some tv at the end of the day it's going to feel good for your feet you know you can on amazon be like some of those foot baths down there you could pour it in there soak and massage your feet at the same time you know get rid of your fungus and studies definitely do show that this helps garlic so this is a, this is one that actually had surprisingly excellent results i don't recommend this one because garlic stinks you know uh but, you know my daughters and my wife they have very sensitive smell so I could never get away with using garlic because it has a really bad odor to it. But a 2009 study showed excellent results. So basically people squished it, used the juice, kind of put it on their nails. What's even easier is you can buy some capsules or buy some pre-made stuff, put it on your nails and fingernails. Um, but again, garlic kind of smells. Olive leaf extract. So a 2012 study showed that olive leaf extract did an amazing job. It has antifungal and antibacterial properties. People put it on their fingernails and their toenails three times a day. Great results, killed that fungus. Oregano oil. So this might be something a little bit more easily available. So a 2016 study showed, you know, it has thymol in it. It has some antibacterial, antifungal properties, same kind of thing. You just grab a Q-tip, you know, rub it on your fingernails in the morning, in the evening. Great results, you know, keep, keep up the using. And number eight is a diet. So the trick with the diet is, uh, if you have diabetes, if you have blood flow issues, if you have bad heart, if you're overweight, you know, I'm a huge, huge fan of intermittent fasting, uh, cutting down the sugars, getting your health into great shape. You know, there's keto diets. I link some great videos that we start doing um, below. Fixing your diet gets your immune system up, gets your blood flow down to your toenails and your fingernails. This does an amazing job. This is probably food that you should be eating anyway. Biotin is another important vitamin. This is one that studies recently are showing can make a dramatic difference in helping grow back nails healthier, stronger, and faster. So if you need to, consider biotin as well. Keep the feet dry and clean. So fungus lives in dark places, kind of like a mushroom, that mushroom joke. What do you feed a mushroom? Like you give it crap and leave it alone in the dark and don't tell it what's going on. Uh, that's what fungus is. And I make these jokes because I'm also fun guy so i'm allowed to do this but the trick is you can't wear the same socks over and over if you have foot fungus change your socks every day even maybe twice per day like if you're a factory worker on your feet all day i'm gonna link some socks below um you know because it's always confusing i say get socks that wick moisture but people always get confused that's always the number one question so just check out the ones i show below you don't have to buy them from me that's just some recommendations clean your shoes if you have ugly dirty gym shoes and you're going out on a date or something get like some lysol spray wash them clean them a lot of the things we talk about clean out your shoes uh you can use anti-sweat agents so astringents and i'll link some below too you can use powders to dry out your feet. Lamisil powder works great. It's cheap, again, down below. Rather than just talking about this for an hour, I just talk about which ones to get, and that probably can help out a little bit. Keep those feet dry, keep them clean, keep the sweat off as much as possible using all these strategies, and make sure your shoe is aerated as much as possible. Newer, more expensive shoes tend to do this, but at the same time, like leather occlusive shoes, that means the ones that don't let you breathe, they will smell, they will hold bacteria and fungus that just keeps reattacking your foot. Now here's the big secret. This is the big, big secret. The biggest thing I see people not do, their toenails are loose, they're too thick, and they're detached. So for the most part, you can put all of these things on your fingernails and your toenails, but if they're not penetrating, through that thick nail, they will not get to the bottom where the fungus is hiding like a reservoir. So this is like in the military when people hide in the bunkers and the bombs land on top. If you don't smooth down that nail, if you don't clip that nail before you apply all these things, odds are it won't make it in there. So that's the trick. And as a podiatrist, that's what I do. And we see rapid, rapid, very rapid relief. You know, I see people within a couple appointments, their fungus is gone after like 10, 20 years of trying all these different creams and remedies. But that's what you need to do. But be careful, don't cut yourself. Go see a professional, especially if you have health issues. But big bonus tip number two, 
Bonus tip number two is even if you cure your toenail fungus, you have to get your athlete's foot. So the thick skin on the bottom of your foot, your calluses, fungus hides there and it crawls right back into your nail. So if, as soon as you cure your nail, it will get right back. So toenail fungus lives on this thick skin. Even if you cure your nails, it's gonna crawl from that thick, dry skin right back into your toenail. So it's very important to get both the toenail and the fungus. So see, it lives in those thicker outer skin layers and blood flow does not get there. So your immune system can't kill it. In clinic, I would trim this up for you. And it's the same thing for the toenails and the skin. Look at, there's no blood flow coming into thick skin chunks like this. And look at how thick this nail is. There's no way a pill will be delivered by your blood flow into those outer thick segments. And from the top, this gel will not make it to the bottom source of the nail. So you could use both the cream and the pills, but why not just trim it with a podiatrist and make sure it gets to the root. And same kind of thing for this thick skin in the back, creams will not penetrate into the deeper layers. You have to trim that. But wait, there's another trick why it might not work. And the big, big tip, tip number two, the secret tip is studies show you have to do this stuff for at least four weeks. So everything we talked about here, so cleaning your feet, cleaning your shoes, trimming your toenails, if you do it for two weeks, the success rate studies have shown is like 50 to 60%. If you do it for four weeks or more, like using the different creams, all the topical agents, that's when people have like 90% relief. Why? Because your skin takes at least like 30 days to regenerate. So our skin has stem cells. It takes your skin time to push it out. So you can have that fungus hiding in those deep layers. And if you're not exfoliating, if you're not cleaning, so that's kind of the goal, the sea salt soaks to get down, deep down in there, you're not gonna have great results. So combining the soaks and a lot of these creams does an amazing job. But the big thing is if you have blood flow problems, diabetes, if you have a bad diet, we have some great videos on great diets, sugar-free, carb-free foods, keto diets, intermittent fasting, but come see your podiatrist. Get your diabetes, your blood flow problems, all that kind of stuff taken care of. I care about you guys. You know, I wanna see great results. This is a very important topic. So if you can share this with your friends on Facebook, on YouTube, and keep watching the videos. We'll see you on the next one. We have guides for everything. Keep watching. We appreciate you and good luck.